Oh, you got your RTS in my FPS ball. No, you got your FPS in my RTS ball. Ah. Natural Selection is a horror-themed multiplayer Half-Life mod developed by Unknown Worlds that combines real-time strategy and first-person shooter elements to make up an amazing mod, which has gone on to win two different Mod of the Year awards and has been downloaded over two million times. I have to say, this mod is amazing. It debuted in 2002 on Halloween. And people still play it today. That's over eight years old. That's amazing. The gameplay is by far the best on any Half-Life mod. It has Classic, which is real-time strategy, first-person shooter, and then Combat, which is straightforward team versus. Let's talk a little about the different types of aliens and the upgrades of the Marines. Now, there's five separate types of aliens. The Skulk is the main alien. This is the one you start out with and you level up from here. It's a dog-like creature with claws and it can walk on walls and the ceiling. The Lurk is a smaller flying alien, almost about the same size as the Skulk, which flies and shoots poisonous gas. The Gorge is a slow, fat, dog-like creature which builds structures in classic, as well as combat but in combat he also shoots poisonous acid bombs and builds whips marines can struggle to get through. Now, the Fade is an upright bipedal alien with two arms featuring gigantic claws at the end of each. And this motherfucker is hard to kill. A skilled Fade can take out an entire marine team if he feels like it. The Onos is like the Buddha of aliens. He's big, fat and happy. He's like a large rhinoceros that can stun marines in their tracks and eat them whole if he feels like it. And he can use his horn on top of his head to destroy anything he wants. In both game modes, there are upgrades for either side. In classic, as aliens, you build new structures and as the game progresses, upgrades become available and as for the marines, you must build stations, separate ones for each upgrade. And for either side, to build anything at all costs resources, and to get any of the upgrades costs resources. Say so you're an alien, and you go into your menu and you choose, say, cloaking. That would cost you, say, 10 resources. As a marine, as a commander, if you dropped someone a shotgun at base, it would cost 5 resources. Now, for combat, to get the resources on either side, all you have to do is kill players in the opposite team to get that experience. And once you have enough experience to level up, each time you level up you get a point, which you can spend on any upgrade you choose. Now, some upgrades cost more points than others, so be careful on how you spend them. Marines upgrades can give you anything from motion tracking to jetpack or heavy armor. Other upgrades include weapons. Uh, Stock weapons are an LMG and the knife. You can upgrade the LMG to either an HMG, heavy machine gun, a shoddy, or a grenade launcher. They've done such a great job with all of these upgrades and all of these alien life forms being together all at once. I can't imagine the kind of headache they've gone through to get all of this balanced. One of the biggest problems for me, even to today, has to be what upgrade to get first when and why. It's just something you can't really tell and it depends on your playstyle. The most unique thing about how Classic does real-time strategy, featuring complex maps, a skilled team always has to be talking to take victory. As a Marine, when you use the command chair, your view changes from first person to an RTS type of view. And when you select your teammates by creating a box over them or simply clicking each one of them and then right clicking the map or objects to execute them, you can command them to build objects, move to a waypoint, and to attack or defend at that waypoint. 
The aliens, however, don't get to see this view. They rely on gorges to build structures and team communication to decide on their plan of attack while defending their hive from the marines. A combat game mode is the non-RTS version of the game, which still focuses on defending the hive or command chair, but relies on your team blowing the living crap out of the other team to level up and gain experience and eventually defeat the other team and take down their command chair or hive. Now, if I had to choose between which I liked more, I would probably pick combat because of the shorter games, the increased intensity, and how fun the game is. Now don't get me wrong, classic is fun as hell. But while two teams are both good, some of the games could last longer than an hour, and that's just not my thing. The sound is possibly one of the best things. It still holds its own, even today. It's one of the best parts about the mod. It really makes you feel like you're in space or on a ship. And the clanging of the skull claws and the squishing of the gorgeous paws really sound good too. And apparently, I'm related to Dr. Seuss. Now, sound alone can give you a reason enough to make this game theme scary and give you that something is hunting you feeling. This game at the time had decent graphics. It was on the Half-Life Gold Source engine, so you couldn't expect too much. But they did really good with all the lighting in the maps. That's impressive. This is such a unique idea, it's no wonder they've won so many awards and so many people love it. I love how they've combined first-person shooter and real-time strategy to make a completely new type of game. It's really unique, and it's in a class all of its own. Now, I'm sure you have a grasp on what a mod is if you're watching this review. While Natural Selection is a Half-Life mod, there are gameplay mods of Natural Selection, as well as replacement skins. One of the more famous gameplay mods of this mod has to be Marines vs. Marines. Well, you might say, well, isn't that just Half-Life Deathmatch? I would argue it's completely different, and similar in some ways. There were dozens upon dozens of maps created for this mod. Also, it was amazing how many alone were created for MVM. One of the things I liked about Marines vs. Marines is the maps that were created. They were Super Mario maps and Lego maps, and even a Simpsons map also. Another one of the lesser known gameplay uh, modifications for Natural Selection had to be the Gnome mod. One of the lucky players would become a Gnome, which was just a resized version of the Marine. The Gnome was also ridiculously fast, and had speed upgrades in welding and building. I think the best thing about this gameplay mod of how funny it was, because you just couldn't stop laughing at the gnome, and it was even better when the person would talk in a high-pitched voice. It was just ridiculous. Even if you don't like natural selection, I'd say give the user created content a whirl. The graphics are a bit dated, but you won't be paying any attention to them as you're fighting off the aliens that are trying to kill you. The sound is still great. It holds its own for today. The controls are great also. It makes you feel like you're an alien stalking its prey. Altogether, this is a great game. It should be played by anyone who owns Half-Life.